Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Adriana Tibana, and I'm a professor at Federal University of Alagoas in Brazil. Uh, the research I'm going to present to you today is called Critical Phonological Literacy, Redesigning Phonology Instruction in the Teaching of English as an Additional Language. I've been working with uh, phonology for quite a long time, and I've, I've also been working with critical literacy. And if you have ever worked with critical uh, literacy, you know that it takes over your life, it takes over everything. So I wanted to bring critical literacy into phonology. So I wanted to look uh, at phonology at, uh, to teach phonology, looking at language, not, not only as a structure, but as discourse. So this research investigated the transformative potential of English phonology teaching when devised within the perspective of critical literacy. My main aim was to analyze and reflect upon my phonology teaching practice in the teaching of English as an additional language in order to open up the possibility of redesigning this teaching within the perspective of critical literacy. Uh, my specific objectives were to identify the relationship between phonological processes and the deconstruction of meanings in the oral test. That means I wanted uh, to know what these processes, these prosodic processes influence, how it, 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 they influenced the way we, we looked at, we, we, we listened to an oral test text, as well as the impact that the explicit instruction of perception of this process would have on my practice and that of uh, my undergraduate students. I also wanted to make room for reflection on English phonology activities based upon critical literacy and a dialogical perspective on language. My theoretical conceptual and conceptual basis uh, were on critical applied linguistics, Penny Cook, complex so thought, Morin, critical literacy, Jenks and others, intonation of phonology, Ladd, mini making and mini negotiation, uh, Kanagaraja, Aidima, uh, Kress, Van Leeuwen. Uh, it is a qualitative research. Uh, it's an experimental and exploratory case study within, within English phonology one and two, the two disciplines that I, I teach at university. Uh, the participants were 20 undergraduates from the penultimate and final year of the English course at the Faculty of Letters, Modern Languages of the Federal University of Alagoas members of the Casa de Cultura no Campus project. This project is a project where students uh, from the modern language uh, department, they, they teach uh, languages and additional language to other undergraduate, undergraduates from other areas at the campus. So they, they, they were all teaching. Uh, my data collection uh, uh, was from my research journal that I used to write uh, after e every lesson. And I also made two uh, semi-structured interviews with the, with the participants, one at the end of the research, and then I waited eight months, and then, I, and then and we had an, another interview because I wanted to know if anything had changed, if they, the impact, the first impact, uh, st still lasts, and that's why I, I waited eight months to, to, to have the, the second interview. Uh, also, my, uh, the critical phonology activities produced by the participants as final evaluation, they had to produce an activity uh, for teaching phonology that had this uh, critical perspective. My research results, uh, I divided into three parts. Uh, the first part is critical phonology and prosody, uh, accents and the deconstruction of meanings. I noticed that there was an increased perception of the role of the accent in oral and multimodal texts. 
And uh, uh, I've noticed also that there was the re of the idea of error in speech in both the mother tongue and the additional language. Students started to be more tolerant to uh, variations of accents in their mother tongue and also in the English language because they, they got in touch with many more uh, variations with English uh, from New Zealand, from India, uh, even from uh, even from Brazil and, and other countries that they're not na native speakers. Uh, also on tone units, rhythm and, and the deconstruction of meanings, I've noticed that there was a change of focus on the word and image to the influence of prosodic aspects as co-constructions of meanings. Uh, students started really listening to an oral text and understanding what was uh, underneath this prosodic structure of a text and what, inf what it influences the way they listen to this text. Uh, there was also an expansion of the perception of the direct influence of language on people's lives and an awareness of the teacher's own speech and how it can help to establish or block contacts with the, his students. Students started to think, now I, I think about my voice. I think about the way I speak, the way uh, if, it's in a, if it's monotone and my students are not really paying attention and I change the rhythm and I can grab students' attention. I, I, I became to notice this a, a lot. Uh, I began to notice this a lot. Uh, there was always also the breaking the native epistem. I noticed that there was an attempt to legitimize native, non-hegemonic and non-native accents, especially the Brazilian English variation. Students started looking at language not only in the this small box of British English or American English. They started started look uh, looking at uh, English as all sorts of variations, and this idea of the the ideal uh, native was finally broken. I would say. Uh, also, there was a deconstruction of the identity of the non-native teacher and the student, and the resemiotization of the idea of the native speaker, and therefore an empowerment of the non-native who comes to see himself as a multilingual speaker. So the non-native teacher be becomes the multilingual speaker. The native speaker becomes a monolingual speaker. Uh, then I'm gonna show you what I propose when I talk about critical phonological literacy. I've uh, selected part of this chart, it's a, it's a long chart because I discuss everything that we teach when we teach phonology. So I selected just a, a few examples just to show you. Uh, when we teach sentence stress, uh, weak and strong forms and prominence, within the concept of language as a structure, which is the concept of language that is used when you teach traditional phonology, you teach the rhythm of the English uh, language based on the, uh, the idealized variations of British and American English as stress time. And you disregard the syllable time, the rhythm of its variations that are not considered prestigious. So it's always British and American English. When you teach uh, language as discourse and you teach critical phonological literacy, uh, you, te you teach stress and, and syllable time uh, rhythms in the numerous variations of the English language, both native and non-native. You reflect on prosody and its uh, de or reconstruction of meanings in the oral text. And you reflect on how prominence seen from a critical perspective can equip us with instruments that leads us to a deeper understanding of an oral text, which goes far beyond words permeating the social, cultural, political, and even individual beliefs of the speaker. 
When you teach tone units within a traditional perspective, you are teaching the marking of our speech in blocks and its consequence for the intelligibility of an oral text, especially when reading aloud. When you teach uh, uh, critical phonological literacy, you expand the perception in relation to the way we divide our speech and its implications in the con co construction of meanings in the oral text. When you teach rhythm and intonation in the tradition of you, you're teaching rhythm and intonation to avoid transferring prosodic patterns from the mother tongue to the additional language, aiming at reducing the foreign accent. When you teach uh, within a discourse perspective, you increase the perception of the role of the accent in the construction of meanings of your oral and multimodal text. You discuss about linguistic profile. You change the focus on word and image for the influence of prosodic aspects of the constructions of meanings. You expand the perceptions of the direct influence of prosody and consequently of language in people's lives. And you reflect on prosody in the teacher's own speech and how it can help to establish or block contacts with the students. So the data shows that critical phonological literacy engenders a better understanding of the process that interfere with the construction of meanings in the oral language and promote reflections on the implications of these meaning makings in maintaining or not social inequalities. Uh, here are some of my reference. Muchas gracias. Muito obrigada. Thank you very much. And if you want to to get further acquainted to this critical phonological literacy, you know how to reach me.